Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, we're talking Harold and Fraud. That's right, they're back in the news. And today, it's interesting. We are going to talk about their new reported money woes and why they're hemorrhaging money. But first, I want to bring in the reason I'm hemorrhaging money. <laughs> Say hello to everybody, favorite co-host. Hello, this is Jay, also known as Dr. Bad Vibes on YouTube and Twitch. We're here to talk about hemorrhaging money. Yeah, so to prepare for it, I pulled all these pictures of things they love to piss their money away on, like stupid clothes, private jets, expensive... Um, oh gosh, you guys told me in the comments. I think I don't think it was HG Tutor. Oh, I want to give credit. I don't remember who called it. Somebody called their house the Montecito Olive Garden. I want to give them credit. Leave me comments. You guys know who I'm talking about. I don't think it was HG Tutor, but... Anyway, maybe it's a body language guy. I can't remember. But anyway, brilliant. That's what it is. So they love to piss their money away on things like that. Now, as you know, Harry has about mm, 40 million uh, court cases in the works. And so that's costing a fortune. We'll talk about that. And this um, security issue where he's trying to pawn the bill off onto, you know, all of us. We'll talk about that. And yeah, we'll jump right on into this. Yes, let's get into it. A tale as old as time, same as pro athletes, musicians, celebrities, people that think the money will never stop and don't, and in a lot of cases don't realize their 15 minutes are up, but keep spending like uh, they've still got uh, years of fame left. So this is probably going to be similar to that. Uh, I've watched several uh, documentary. There was a really good documentary on Netflix about pro athletes, how they just blow all their money, like why they all end up penniless. Mm -hmm. It's pretty sad. So I bet we're going to see some similarities here. All right. So we got this article here. It says Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's $23 million money nightmare. Oh, poor things. Between their lux life in California and the Duke of Sussex's various courtroom stouches. Ooh, I like that word. The California couple are in a very sticky situation. This comes out of Australia. So, Jay, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Give me your best Australian. Tell me tell me what nightmares they are. Crikey, that's a big bill. That's <laughs> like a Rue just came in and pouched all your money, oh, God. put all that cash on the Barbie. That's an expensive wife. <laughs> Here's my disclaimer. Apology to our friends in Australia. We love you all so much. You're some of the best comments we get. So please don't take that as a hate crime. We love you. An entire island in the Caribbean. A lesser Picasso. 10.4 million packets of Tim Tams. I'm being dramatic. If you wanted to blow through $23.5 million like a hot knife through Jersey butter and with all the profligacy, this journalist is going to blow through uh, their money, spending using all these $10 words, of an early Audi's Paris Hilton, then there are plenty of ways to do it. Or in the case of Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, and proud new owner of a Bank of America Saver key card, you could put out an Instagram post preemptively announcing you, you had it up to Hero's Royal Life and were off to find himself in the land of vanilla oat latte. Well, that was a very twisty, turny way to say he's blowing his money. Um... Honestly, when I first read, uh, I skimmed through the article and I thought he'd actually, I mean, because we're talking about Harry here, I thought he'd actually purchase that many Tim Tams. <laughs> and I was like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> like, he, he must really like this. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I do love a good Tim Tam every five minutes of the day. <laughs> and yeah, how would he keep those fresh? But obviously... Wait, I'm sorry, he gets the munchies when he has his mushroom <laughs> snack, yeah. Yeah, really. But... So they're just illustrating uh, how much $23.5 million would uh, cover. So, yeah, if he's burning through money at that rate, you're a wizard, Harry. I love that you thought he bought that many Tim Tams. I, I just have this vision in my head of, like, one time when he was a child, Charles told him, no, Harry, you can't have that right now. And he's like, I'll show you, Pa. I'll buy all the Tim Tams. <laughs> but it's not just him spending the money, lest we forget all the dumb outfits and how much it, how much it costs to look this stupid, right? Turns out that freedom is not free at all. More than 40 months. I like, and it's like a mother talking about the child when you don't want to acknowledge that they're no longer a baby and you do that weird month thing. How old's your baby? 40 months. All right, more than 40 months from Megxit, from the statements and the t TV tearing up. Ooh, I like that. 
After the Tell All Book, the podcast, the Netflix docuseries, and its many magazines and TV interviews, a recently divorced Real Housewife, hey, <laughs> with a line of vitamin gummies to sell, the full cost of Harry and wife Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, uh, flight from Blady has come into focus. That's a lot of words I don't know. Now, Based on figures reported by the Daily Mail and Newsweek, the combined costs so far of the Sussex's U.S. move, plus his various legal showdowns in London, looks to be about dun, 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 $23.5 million. That figure, mind you, is based on Harry triumphing in court. Should he lose all of them, fingers crossed, that total figure could be more like $50 million. Wow. And then they write, so two Picassos then. Love that they reference The Real Housewives. I know Real Housewives Australia is a pretty popular show. I believe there's at least one, maybe two franchises, but um, I love that. And Jay, what do you think Real Housewives of Australia is about? I'm guessing probably they fight kangaroos, um, scream constantly at the nightmare spiders uh, present there, and probably constantly chasing down the dingoes that stole their children. <laughs> I'm teasing. I love Australia. I really want to go there. I had a chance about 20 years ago, and I couldn't do it, so I'm sad. What about the koalas with chlamydia? Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't don't touch those koalas with chlamydia. <laughs> chlamydia. <laughs> My God, that's too funny. Seriously, though, we love Australia. If you thought you were suffering through interest rises and inflation, then hold on to your hats. <laughs> Harry and Meghan might pitch their California dream as, oh, just so normal, kids on bikes, hiking, and beach walks with the dogs. But this normalcy comes with a price tag that is anything but. According to figures from the from the mail and from 2020, even then, the Sussexes' cost, including their mortgage, security, staff, travel, clothing, and food, good God, so much stuff, would be about uh, $6.7 million Australian annually. That works out to about $18,331 a day. Holy smokes. Holy I'm saying that and reading holy smokes. That's crazy. <laughs> $18,000 a day. You guys, I can't even wrap my head around that. What if you just like, I don't know, had a lazy chill day where you just stay in your PJs. You spent $18,000 that day. Seriously. Jay, what would you do with $18,000 a day? Besides all the Tim Tams? <laughs> Let's see. $18,000 a day. I could probably buy out at least one Dollar Tree. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, you know, or Dollar General, any of those stores, probably buy, the, buy out the whole inventory. Cool, yeah, great idea. Then we'd have 18,000 whatever pieces of shit laying around that I'd end up tripping over and having to clean up. Yeah. I don't know, do you remember when the Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree sold steaks? Oh, they were boy. basically like <laughs> random <laughs> like meat glued together. Oh, God. We could eat like kings. I mean, realistically, though, I mean, this is almost like... For you know, if you're being serious and a normal person, this is almost like a Brewster's Millions thing. Yeah. Check that movie out if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's like what early '80s, mm -hmm. and it's pretty funny. Richard Pryor, but like you would be hard pressed to a normal person would be hard pressed to sell uh, to spend that much in a day. I mean, unless you're just being stupid. <laughs> which sounds like they are. Yeah, which yeah, <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> When the Sussexes ditched London in 2020, they didn't seem to have considered the financial ramifications, I'll say. The fact that the couple would have to pay their own bills seems to come as quite the shock. <laughs> to Harry, who complained to Oprah in 2021, my family, oh, you say it, my family literally cut me off financially. My family literally cuts me off financially. All I had to do was show up and do charity work and I'd have everything paid for, but no. They only got short notice that they wouldn't get keep, get to keep receiving taxpayer-funded protection. Up till then, Charles had been forking out more than $8 million annually to support both the Suckasses and the Prince and Princess of Wales families. And specialist UK police had been provided their security as they played house and borrowed Mega Mansion an entire ocean and continent away. That's such a good point, and it just shows the entitlement of these two. They just expected, you know, as everything had been taken care of for them, taken care of for them up until that point, they expected that it would continue. And I remember him talking about, I believe it was in Spare, his shock that 
Paul wouldn't cut off the protection. It's like, no, idiot, you quit your job. You don't get the perks anymore. Yeah, it'd be like if any of us quit quit our job and then we had to have surgery and then we took the bill back to our previous employer and we're like, pay this. (laughs) (laughs) They'd just be like, what are you talking about? It makes that much sense. Well, of course, unless you're in the UK or Australia or basically Bay Canada, basically any other country. (laughs) (laughs) So the article continues, but just to summarize it, Cliff Notes, TLDR, um, they have more pending court cases that are probably not going to go anywhere and that's going to end up piling up more money. So uh, I'm no accountant, but if you're spending more than you're earning, that's uh, going to lead to trouble. And I do think, I've said this before, I don't know, I'm just, it's my opinion that a lot of the deals that were published about like Netflix deals, Spotify deals, stuff like that, are way overinflated. I've heard this happens with celebrities. They do it for the headlines. And to make themselves seem more important, they way overinflate how much they are getting. And then they never take out, oh, but, you know, this amount goes to my lawyer. This amount goes to my agents, you know, that sort of thing. This amount goes to the ghostwriter. So I just, I just, (laughs) sorry. Say what you just said again, interrupter. There's ghosts? (laughs) (laughs) Go go eat your Tim Tams. Anyway, (laughs) there's uh, costs like this stupid dress right here because... Sure. Why wouldn't you spend 26,000 pounds on a just a black dress? Anyway, I do think that those deals are overinflated. I think they're hemorrhaging money. I think it's just adding to the pressure of the relationship. Things cannot be going well. And now this, uh, all these lawsuits that are going on. I'm laughing because I just heard that. So t- I don't know what day this is going up, but on the same Tuesday coming up, again, this might be going up Tuesday. I don't know. Um, Harry will be, Harry's visa thing will be at a hearing, but he will also be at a trial in London. So he's got lots of stuff going on. Maybe trial's not the right word. I know you guys always fix in the comments, whatever. He'll be there for a court case in London. So lots of legal stuff going on with that guy. (laughs) He can't stop suing people. Yeah. And uh, surprise to many people, uh, it's not free to sue somebody in most cases. Uh, it costs a lot of money, especially on, uh, you know, the level he's doing this at. And, I, you know, it's like a preliminary hearing. So it's, I assume it works the same in the UK. Like basically the judge hears the case and he's just going to be like, no, nah, no, go away. <laughs> and then he spent all that money to bring it, you know, bring it forward. It's for it to get shot down and nothing will happen. And the visa case, that one, that one's interesting. I don't, that's going to be a hard one to predict. I mean, that, it could just be like one of those things where they're just like, oh, whatever, and, and, and nothing happens. Or it could turn into a big deal. I, I mean, my, like most cases, it could go either way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes or no. <laughs> that's, that's my uh, uh, very in depth uh, legal insight. <laughs> Did the ghost tell you that? Yeah, and, and he's burning money, like conjuring these uh, undead souls to finish his book, apparently. That can't be cheap. You saw, I mean, uh, it costs so much money in Ghostbusters to build that stuff. I can't imagine what it's like in real life. Wow. Well, on that insane note, <laughs> please don't spend that money on Ghostbusting shit. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. This was a lot of fun. Love our Australian friends. Thank you for being here. I apologize for Jay. Jay, you want to say goodbye to everybody in your best Australian accent? Tell them where to find you. Goodbye, mate. It's going to go put a shrimp on the Bobby. Be sure to check me out on YouTube as Dr. Bad Vibes. Leave a like and subscribe. Oh, that's a like. You almost sound like uh, Jason Statham goes to Australia, which I kind of love. I'm a beautiful bald man that drives a car very fast. Wow. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I hope you have the best day. And as more stuff comes out about this, we will keep talking about it. Take care. Bye-bye.